Hey everybody, uh, got a chance to fish yesterday. Um, yesterday was Sunday, April 19th, I think. And uh, we, did, we did pretty good. We've, we've been doing pretty good on, on Cumberland. Water's clearing up really nicely. Temperature's 56 to 60, depending on what part of the lake you're in. Um, the fish are biting well. Fish are getting ready to go on the nest. Fish are on the nest. Fish are coming off the nest. Um, it's that time of year where you can catch them doing about anything. A lot of people catching them on spinner baits and flipping. Uh, I've caught a few spinner baiting. Uh, that's not my style, um, but I have been catching a lot of fish. Um, we've been doing two things. We've been finding places that go from the channel to these. And Cumberland is a weird lake, as opposed to everything else I've fished in my life. You don't have a, a defined. You don't have like river ledges or creek channels or anything to run. You just have a gut that goes from the main lake to the back of a creek. It's just one big gut. And I've noticed on this lake, um, this time of year, it's the first year I've ever fished this lake, that all these all these little drains that come off the hill, these like little creeks that come off the hill, and uh, largemouth and smallmouth will spawn in those little guts. They're, they're gravelly, they're, they have slate in them, they love those little guts. So um, I've been finding places that go from the, the main lake back to those little guts and just been running running the steeper side with a, a swim bait. A Key Tech 4.8 to 3.8. Um, been throwing the Easy Shiner a little bit. Uh, just on a 3 8 half ounce head and you can just put the trolling motor down uh, on six or seven and burn that spinner bait right now. When that water temperature is over 57, the smallmouth will chase it down, they don't care. Um, it's a good way to cover a ton of water. There's a ton of unproductive water in Cumberland. Uh, fish tend to, to find little places they love and, and group up in those. Everywhere looks good, so you kind of have to just burn through a bunch until you find something they like. Um, so to do that, I've, I've, I've been burning that, that swim bait. Um, Pro Blue, Tennessee Shad. Um, if water's dirty, I'll throw white. I hate throwing that white. Um, but that's one way to catch them. Really? Nope. Oh, just running at me. I couldn't catch up with him. Oh. Well, we found another one. <laughs> I don't think he's a keeper. Oh, he's not? Told you. Fucking told you. <laughs> The other way, the, the two to our one-two punch, um, when we're not running those transition banks, is to just go to those places we think they're spawning. They're spawning deeper than what you can see, so what you kind of have to do is, is find an area that you think they're spawning, which typically looks on Cumberland, is uh, those little guts that come off the hill, those little shallow, um, the shallower creeks that come off the hill. Um, they'll spawn in those, the ones that don't have a ton of current. Um, it's kind of particular. There's so many, they, they kind of favor the ones that don't have current coming off of them um, and the ones with more gravelly, not so slick rock. Um, so we, when we find those, we tend to, to stop and, and really fish those out. Uh, Kelly, my wife, isn't the greatest with a spinning rod. And I, uh, I'll throw a tube. I'll throw a tube with an insert and just throw it in those because it comes through rock so well. Um, it's got an exposed hook, so... Subtle bites, you'll pick them up. So a tube with an insert is a great bait to throw. A shaky head's a great bait to throw in that. A drop shot's a good one to throw in that. Uh, but something that I learned from Gary Yamamoto a long time ago in a PAA tournament um, is this little setup that I run for her. She's not great with spinning rod, my wife. Um, she can't feel those bites. And this is just a perfect way for someone who isn't a flipper or someone who isn't comfortable throwing a spinning rod that you can get them out there and, and put a bait in front of a fish, a flipping fish. Um, it's kind of almost cheating. I'll take a, a twist lock hook, owner makes that. If you see it, it's got a little twist lock on it, a little hitchhiker. And you take a, a four inch Senko, um, and you just run it up on that hitchhiker, like that. And then you can, you can put the hook in there, Texas rig style, you know, weedless style. I fished with Gary Yamamoto, and the whole day, this is all he threw. It was a PAA on Fort Loudon. This is all he threw. It was that hitchhiker owner hook. 
with the twist lock. And he takes a wood nail, just a wood screw, and screws it up the ass of that bait. And you will be amazed at how many fish, people who don't fish very often, I've been fishing with this one for three days and I've mangled it a little bit. It looks horrible now, but you can get it where it looks really good. But that's what it'll look like. And it'll sit perfectly upright. And someone who doesn't, who, who you can't trust throwing a jig, who can't feel that bite with a jig or a beaver or uh, a finesse bait, you can put that on there, that fish will grab it. And when it swims off, if they tighten the hook, it's gonna get them. I mean, that hook comes right through the end part of that Senko. Um, I, and I, I found that when he did that, I was like, oh, light, light bulbs going off in my head. People who don't fish very much that you, that you want to take, that's a great way to let them throw something they can feel, something fish will pick up. And Kelly, uh, <laughs> Kelly got a ton of fish. And, a, and one big one. I'll, I'll see if I have uh, footage of it to throw on there. It was the first fish of the day uh, yesterday. It was a giant. It was like three and a half, four pounder. I mean, not a giant, but for her, one of the biggest fish she's caught. Um, and the cool thing about this, he wasn't fishing it because he, he can't throw a flipping bait. He was fishing it because when you move that bait, that nail is in the back and it will, when he gives it slack, it will go backwards. So that fish follows that out of cover and then you give it a little slack, it'll go right back in his face and it'll um, kind of a protective instinct will get it. Like kind of like when you burn a crankbait by a fish, like there's a protective aspect to it, like a reaction bite to that. So uh, we threw that a lot. Um, point of the story, Swim bait, finesse bait in the guts. Uh, that's how we've been doing it. I'm sure there's a million other uh, ways people are catching them right now, but that's how I'm doing it, and we're doing pretty good. Um, Smallmouth are starting to nest pretty heavily, so we're um, actually, that bite's starting to dwindle, but still catching them like that. I imagine we're gonna have a little lull here while they're doing their thing and then and then resting. Uh, it's gonna get good. Top water bite's gonna heat up soon. It's gonna be great. Good luck, guys. Uh, drop comments how you guys how you guys have been catching them. Um, good luck. Oh yeah. Oh dude, big one, big one, big one, big one. Oh, big one. Oh. Should I reel him in slow like that? Let him kind of wear stuff out. Oh. Don't reel, don't reel. Just let him, just let him play. I'm not seeing a dog. It's a giant. It's a giant. Let him kind of, you can kind of bring him around with a rod a little bit. Reel a little bit. Keep the rod tip up. Is it okay that he's getting in there? Oh yeah, good job. <laughs> Ooh. He's big. How big do you think he is? Uh push him forward. <gasps> really? Uh, put it in the box now. Okay. Fifteen inches to 